to Meanwhile at the Castle. We are, I can never remember what I'm supposed to say. Okay, we'll Thank try you. that again. Welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle. We are queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah. And we're coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah on an extremely rainy, crazy Wednesday. Is so, today Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday, About good. 10 minutes ago, it was bright and yeah. sunny. <sighs> Now it's raining. Now That's it's okay. Weather is lighting. fun, actually. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, you can find our show notes below this video, but if you'd like clickable links, you can find them on our website at meanwhileatthecastle.com. We also have a Ravelry group, which you can find by searching Meanwhile at the Castle in the groups tab. And I think that that's all of our, everything that we need to do for our little intro, right? I think so. Good. Yay. I don't know. My brain's... <laughs> gone it's been it's a episode month. 33 i didn't say that and it has been a month yeah so a lot has been going on right so we probably should give you a little bit of an update but first of all yes get a drink this go to the bathroom it's gonna be a while it's been a while since we podcasted so settle in maybe just hit pause every now and again like <laughs> get a take snack. a walk stretch <laughs> so you don't get blood clots from too much sitting <laughs> Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's been a little while. So it has, and we've been some, busy. Let's get some highlights of what's happened over the past yes. month. So um, my my news. I had surgery. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, so I just figured I would tell you. I had um, an ovarian cyst, a large ovarian cyst that I had to have removed. It's really annoying because I went in for a different health problem and we found this that wasn't causing me any pain and I had to have surgery for this, but we haven't resolved the other health problem. So that's super annoying, but it's done and taken care of. That was about two weeks ago and so I'm feeling pretty darn good. I can't lift anything over like 12 pounds for four more weeks. That's like nothing. I think half the time my purse weighs 12 pounds. Yeah, I was say. So I, it's, that's hard. It's hard to remember, but yep. I feel good. I'm doing good. And my family is all healthy and well. The, and the good part about this yes. is that Emily came home with some really trendy, stylish shorts. <laughs> I didn't come home with any. You came home with them. <laughs> I made sure to bring home some of the hospital paper shorts that they give to everybody that's going in for surgery. I brought them home for the kids because I knew that the kids would make good use of them and yes. good use of them they did. So Isaac, my Isaac wore his <laughs> like that whole day. I mean, I think so because I was in a drunk stupor for the rest of the day. And anytime, but anytime he came up, he was like, mom, do you need anything? And I'm like, <laughs> look <laughs> over. And all I can see is like eye level paper shorts. <laughs> I'm like, are you still wearing those? <laughs> and my daughter did a little dancing. And, uh, anyway, so it was fun. Yeah, it was, was fun. fun. <laughs> yeah, that was that was not the highlight. <laughs> that was not the highlight. Uh, oh, I gracious. did my best to try and make Emily laugh at all the wrong you moments. You did. It was awesome. <laughs> Deborah took me for my surgery, and it was an outpatient thing. Um, and we had just had, my husband had so many work conflicts and he was trying to figure it out and we just figured it was easier. And so Deborah was really sweet and took me and it was actually really entertaining because Richard would have been kind of like, you're okay, you're doing good. And then like busy, like he's just an <laughs> introvert. He's not as much of a talker, you know, he's sweet, but Deborah and I, like, it was kind of just like a comedy hour. You get into actually. trouble sometimes, <laughs> even when it's time for surgery. Well, you did ask for that male nurse's phone number. <laughs> Don't bring that up. It was it was honestly an accident, and afterwards I said that is totally inappropriate. I do not want your phone number. And then I, he left the room, and that was good. Okay, oh, that was so funny. Yeah, I can't believe that you remember really that. Oh. You were supposed to have been drugged. That was before I had drugs. I re actually I remember things quite well. Surprisingly. Oh, right. So yeah, but we haven't done a lot um, at our house just because. I was really sick for a week and then I had surgery and I've been recovering. So I have been making stuff like crazy, but you know, we haven't, like we haven't had adventures. You've been having adventures. We've had lots of adventures. We were sick for two weeks yeah. and then uh, luckily only two, we, two of my family members got it, but it lasted mm -hmm. for an eternity. But um, then it was Mother's Day. And Mother's Day was lovely. The weather was lovely. I think so. 
it just seemed lovely, like the really nice day. Mm -hmm. But in the morning, um, I went to church and my two that were sick ended up, I just had my oldest taking oh. care of my youngest. So Claire was taking care of Nadia. They were t the sick, taking care of the sick, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's like and the blind feeding the blind. Yeah, I got a, I got a text in church. It was, Mom, I don't want to call you during church, uh, but will you call me? Nadia passed out. I'm like, what? So I don't know what happened, but we have a nurse in our congregation, and I grabbed her, and we ran home, and Nadia's fine. But the problem was that when you pass out, first of all, what caused it, and second of all, how did you get hurt on your way yeah. down? She hit her head oh. um, on the corner of where a cabinet meets, a, a really sharp point. But this is how we know God's always watching out for us because she got hit right here when she landed dead weight here and it slid up to here Ugh. completely missed her eye i mean she and she doesn't even have a black eye she got a little cut and swollen and it hurt for her to move oh, her mouth Lord. or you know anything but her eye completely missed her eye um so she's doing fine but we had a little bit of a scare there so we just stayed home all the rest of the day and we're very chill so <laughs> yeah um and mother's day you had just had your surgery so yes you were... i did actually go to church i wasn't originally going to i like going to church on mother's day i know for mother's day is a hard day for a lot of women and so i totally respect that but i really enjoy it and mm -hmm. um i like our in our in our church we have a three hour um meeting on our sundays and it's, in our it's three one hour meetings three one hour meetings yeah. yeah so but it's like a three hour church session i guess yeah. <laughs> anyway and in the last one in our congregation every single mother's day they do like a little luncheon for all the women mm -hmm. and um i didn't want to miss that and my daughter who um has been going to a different church she came with me so she would be with me for Mother's Day and so I wanted to be with her and my 19 year old Aria and so that was just fun so I thought well I'm gonna go I'll try it out so I went for the first hour but I'll tell you and during the second hour which is like our Sunday school hour I went into the mother's room where they have all the really comfy chairs uh -huh. and I took a nap <laughs> and I went to the last sounds hour sounds good so that worked out that's how I survived <laughs> that sounds good that's the place that I could hide sometimes if I'm tired. We don't have any young mothers that are, oh, yeah. well, actually we do now. So they'd find me. <laughs> it was fun. I got to talk That's with a bunch fun. of the ladies that I don't really talk with as much because we're just different ages. And so yeah. we don't necessarily, like our kids are all different ages, so we don't necessarily get together and do stuff very mm -hmm. much. But um, yeah, I mean, I did take a nap too, but I also chit-chatted with some people, so. <laughs> That was fun. It was a nice Mother's Day, and but you know we didn't go anywhere. We stayed home. My husband said, "What do you want for Mother's Day to make this enjoyable?" Because he knew, you know, I wasn't feeling super well. And I'm like, I want the house to be clean. I want flowers, and I want you to grill steaks for dinner. And beautifully done. Well done. I've learned that that's the key to marital bliss. Tell your husband exactly what you want, mm -hmm. and he'll most likely try and do it. <laughs> yeah, I always say I want to not have to clean or cook. Yeah, and I that's... usually want to take a nap. And I want to sit in it. Yep. That's Pretty all. Much. I'm like, that's all I want to do. So you guys just do your I don't thing. need fancy or expensive <laughs> presents. I don't need to be made a big yep. deal of. My family did spoil in big, me yeah. in that way, which was very thoughtful of them. Yeah. But yeah, I don't need a whole lot. I used to, as a young mother, so tired all the time and overworked and also very I was very self-centered very much so and over the years I've learned to just relax yeah just chill out it's okay so I was always disappointed on Mother's Day because you know people weren't I don't know doing exactly what I thought it's kind of that now scorekeeping I'm, that yeah it's easy to get and now I'm just in. like a lovely day yeah I'm happy to if I need to do dishes it means that I have people around that I'm feeding yep exactly <laughs> so I'm good yeah um, let's see we spent several weeks working on our vegetable garden which has been neglected for the past many years and so we finally got that all ready and we have it like a third of the way planted so I'm really excited to have 
some fresh homegrown produce again. I don't even think I can tell you how excited I am for that. <laughs> It's really that is really fun. wonderful. Um, we like, if you haven't heard of the Back to Eden garden, gardening method, that's what we use. There's a documentary online that's like an hour and a half long, but I find it fascinating. So that's, that's kind of how we do our gardening. That's fun. I haven't gotten there yet. We got one of our, our um, I have raised garden beds and we got one of them like cleared, but you, I don't know, I always find every year I need to, you need to keep amending your soil, mm -hmm. especially in raised beds because, mm -hmm. anyway, you know, you're not, you know, you're not tilling it down in or anything like that. that and I know, yeah. I love it. I do Sorry. too. I really it's okay. love the thunder. Okay. Anyway, and your soil breaks down, so it gets finer and finer and finer, and so you have to keep adding material back mm -hmm. in. So anyway, I need to do that, and obviously haven't been up to it. But Mother's Day is usually in this area is when we plant... And so I'm behind now, like, but... That's normally when we plant, but it's been cold. It's been cool this that, last week, for that sure. That we didn't really need to plant yet. Yeah, so. I just need to get some things in. I don't need a ton, but I want at least some tomatoes and cucumbers and zucchini. Well, and then this last weekend, we took our maiden Yay. trip to, uh, in our motorhome. We finished it, uh, for the most part. We have a couple of little odds and ends things to finish, but we took it out for our first trip. We went down to Southern Utah to Escalante. It's called the Grand Staircase area. It's massively big and it is amazing. I wanted to travel the world forever and just was talking with my husband like, why travel the world when we could start right in our own backyard? There's so much amazing Because stuff it's here. so beautiful and we went and saw some areas that people dream of traveling. And it was, you know, five, six hours from my house. So I should have done that a long time Which, ago. by the way, five, six hours from your house when you live in Western United States is like nothing, you know, yeah. that's. <laughs> no, that, cause we didn't even make it outside of our state. Right, like that's a day <laughs> trip sometimes. <laughs> well, no, I'm exaggerating. Wide, but not for, not for this, it wouldn't have taken as long, but we had, some challenges getting there with the one of them well the traffic we had completely stopped with an accident and had to wait and get turned around on the freeway and then we um it was so windy mm. that we were driving you know 25 30 miles an hour on the freeway praying that we got there safely but there was no turning back because we were already in the thick of it and so yeah. Went very carefully, and then we had the same thing coming back. It was terrifying, honestly. It was so windy scary. when we were driving. So, anyways, but we have some beautiful footage that I'm going to put at the end of uh, this video of some of the areas that we went. And if you like the movie, the Disney movie Cars, mm -hmm. um, you just need to go to Escalante because then you can live it for real. It is so beautiful. And All we went red on a six mile right. hike which felt more like a 12 mile because it was hot and rocky and you had to climb up and down and really sandy other areas so there's no stable footing kind yeah. of thing and and it was tiring but it was so worth it be, for this gorgeous waterfall that you can see um, and just beautiful areas. And we took our dog Luna with us and we have discovered that she is a camping and hiking dog. That's awesome. And ever since we've been back, she has been like, where is the adventure? I don't know. <laughs> She's just so bored now. <laughs> but she was so well behaved and we've even had these little booties that we put on her for hiking so that her feet wouldn't burn in the hot sand. Well, the sand wasn't that hot, but we needed them anyways because she kept getting burrs and things in her, mm -hmm. in the pads of her feet and they were hurting her. So we put those on. She hated them, but she finally got used to them and did fabulous with it. So that's she awesome. Was, she was a lot of fun to take camping. Everybody that goes camping should have a dog to take with them because they are so fun. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's so oh, and then we'll get into the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair a little bit later. I'll do that towards the end and tell you a little bit about that. I was so sad to not be able to do that this year, but 
Well, like we, you said, we'll talk about yeah. that a little later. We are 15 minutes in and haven't talked about yarn. But so, we need to do our giveaway. So, well, that's yarn. Let's talk okay, about it. let's do that. This beautiful, beautiful skein of yarn by Hula Hut Yarns. Her name's Kathy, who is the dyer, and she is just the sweetest lady. This skein is a single ply, and it is called Magic Unicorn and so it is a fingering weight and she has donated that for our giveaway and i don't even remember what the giveaway was for i do the giveaway <laughs> was for um learning about what your fantasy or bucket list type knitting like that your ultimate dream knit that's right yes and so we had so many fun comments below thank you um, so much i didn't yeah. reply on most i started and then went oh wait this is the giveaway i shouldn't start replying a million times it'll make it hard <laughs> i know it does and i i yeah it's tempting i know and then that's I, when you so go like 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> but some of them gave me some great ideas too so i have to say that i I was inspired reading those. So we've drawn, um, we just used a random number generator and our winner is Lou Nickel or Nicole, I think it's Nickel. And she said, she wants to knit a color work sweater, hopefully by the end of the year. And she mm -hmm. wants to learn to knit socks. And luckily for you, we have a learn to knit socks uh, series, series yeah. video series that you can follow. You can. Uh, follow through mine where I taught how to knit socks top down on Magic Loop mm -hmm. and Emily taught it on DPN so you can go back and look at that we have it in a separate playlist on this um, channel yeah so you can go look at those so let's see Lou how do you want Lou to get in contact with um, get, get in contact with me Lou okay. through Ravelry or on Instagram I'm Indigo Chicken Dolls my name is Deborah, so send me a message and I need your mailing address, your full name and mailing address, and I can send it out to you. That beautiful yarn. Except for on Ravelry, she's just Indigo Chicken. <gasps> That's right, Indigo Chicken on Ravelry, Indigo Chicken Dolls on Instagram. All right. Thank you for remembering sure. my contact information. <laughs> okay, All right. let's get get good and comfy now. We're going to talk, talk about finish all the objects. Yes. There we have a couple. <laughs> Let's start with the two behind us. Aren't those cute? They're so fun. They are so cute. This is the Raina shawl. Mm -hmm. um, the Raina shawl is by Nora Lavola. Yep. N-O-O-R-L-A-I-V-O-L-A. -O -O -L -L <laughs> It'll be in the show notes. We'll put Down it in Down below. There. The Raina shawl is a free pattern on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. And it has a ton of projects on there. Yep. Um, Very fun. This is the one I knit for my daughter's birthday, and I got it done just in time. I ended up not doing the Pico bind off on a contrasting color like we were talking about mm -hmm. because you I decided. Right on. No, it's I liked. Cute. I liked how it looked. I decided I liked the simplicity of it. I used um, a skein of Tilting Planet yarn in the Cosmic colorway, and. I blocked it to death, but it has been worn a lot. She loved it so much. I had pictures of it on my Instagram account. You can go back and see a picture of her holding it. She has worn it probably 10 times in the last month. Yeah, least. I've seen it. She looks so she cute in it, too. She loves it. So that took so one that is, entire skein. I mean, yeah. Just about every bit of it. <laughs> So I, I was inspired by you and I copied and made the Raina shawl too. And so this is the one I did. And I actually knit, I think you added a couple extra rows of garter. On the I bottom. did. I didn't do just two or three rows like it said. Uh -huh. I wanted it to match this, right. the thickness of this, but I ran out. I didn't have quite enough. So uh -huh. it's close, but not exactly the same. So I didn't add those extra rows of garter. So it was knit directly to the pattern, except for I added the Pico bind off which is adorable it is I am and so in love with that Pico bind off and I knit it in Yarnberry yarns in the knit and pretty 2018 custom colorway I still need some. but this one I'll be honest I dyed a whole bunch of that for the knit and pretty shop for local yarn store day and um, there was one skein that had extra hot pink 
Ah, uh, so you, I kept, you kept that, that one. one. <laughs> yeah, that was the one I chose to keep. So the the other col the colorway she was selling in the store has just a, not very much difference, but just a little bit more white and a little bit less. Have you done more for her shop? Um, I've done of the, two of batches that of that colorway for her. Um, I don't think that it's something she plans on carrying all the time because some. she really wanted it to be a special one. I don't know if she still has some. She didn't order more this last time, but okay. Um, I think that we'll probably be doing it again next year because it was I super really popular. Like that, that colorway a lot. It's so pretty. It is so pretty. It's, it's sold fun. out so fast. There, I was like, oh, I'm on my way to go get some. He's the like, first, um, the first gone. round of it, I, it's, I think it sold out in an hour and a half. Oh, man, um, but it was down to like five skeins in the first. 45 minutes. Yeah, I mean, beautiful. it went fast. So, so people, well, it's because everybody was really excited about, it was um, about supporting their local yarn shop. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what we want to do. We want to support our local yarn shops. So that was and really I fun. I love supporting indie dyers online. I am all about that, but when you can do it locally, even better, even better. I agree. So that's been, that was really a fun, a fun knit. Um, I will knit this again. I almost picked it up and started another one yesterday. <laughs> I would just like to make it bigger. I think I would just have more skeins and make it bigger. Yeah. Because it's really, I mean, it's a fun one to just drape around your neck. And I have worn it a couple of times. But it's definitely wears more like a, like Charlotte. I'm kind of wearing it almost like a bandana. Is mm -hmm. that what I'm trying to say? Um, but yeah, it's it's small. It's more like a shawlette. Well, um, you know what? And I can tell we knit ours with a different size needle. What size did you use? Oh gracious. It calls for... I think it called for a four and I knit it with a five. And I knit mine with a six. That makes sense. I think I would knit the next one with a six. I too. saw that on somebody, somebody had mentioned that on one of their project mm -hmm. pages. And I typically knit my shawls with a six for, if it's fingering weight for the most part. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to do that and I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I really like it. Um, it's I, just such, there's just something so lovely about the lattice yeah. in that pretty speckly yarn. In fact, I'm, one of my works in progress, I'll talk about that a little later because it's inspired me for something else. Okay, but, Emily has a God, so bajillion many. finished objects, so she should go next. Okay, so I was almost done with this in our last um, episode, but I finished the chamomile shawl. This is chamomile by... Julie Dubro, Julie Knits in Paris. Oh, there we go, down to the chevron. And it's knit all in hula hut yarns, colorways in Huckleberry. Oh, I'm not gonna remember. Robin's Egg, Huckleberry Chuckle, and Huckleberry Trifle, I'm pretty sure. Um, this pattern was absolutely delightful to do. I loved it, I love the finished object. My only problem, it's got an I-cord bind off. I don't do a lot of I-cord bind offs. I should have gone up one or two needle sizes in the bind off um, to really get the most out of these chevrons. So at some point when I get emotionally prepared, I'm gonna pull this back out and redo the bind off. Hmm. Just because when I blocked it, it was really hard to get those chevrons. And there's no reason based on the rest of the shawl that I shouldn't be able to get nice, yeah, sharp points. points. It's just because that bind off is a little bit too tight. But you know, that's live and learn and gaining experience. It's beautiful. But it's so fun and I just, I, I actually kind of have worn it like a, it's very much like a statement piece because it's so bright mm -hmm. and a lot of times being a larger woman, I'm kind of afraid. I mean, I wear a lot of color, so don't get me wrong, but I'm kind of afraid to go kind of outside the box as far as style goes because I'm a little bit, you know, I just, I'm like, there's a lot of me already to draw attention, especially in hot pink, you know? So, um, but I did, I just draped it around my shawl and put a big pin right here, like a big, really glitzy pin to hold it. And oh my word, I have had, I had so many compliments when I wore this, um, just like a ton. It made me feel a little bit more like, Hey, I need to, I need to get out there and not be afraid to wear whatever I just want. Be you. Cause yep. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Sorry. That just was reminding me of a deep thoughts. <laughs>
I'll let it go. Okay. Anyway. But I want to hear it. Well, it's that one where he's Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. Yes, let's he's hear like, it. Okay, get Sometimes I just want to throw back my head and gargle. Just gargle and gargle and I don't care who hears me because I am beautiful. <laughs> I it doesn't thoughts. make any sense, which is why it's so funny. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Next I have what I'm wearing. Okay. This is what the spurred our giveaway. Um, I was scrolling through my Pinterest feed, uh, not feed, my knitting board, and I went to the first thing that I had pinned, and it was this shawl, the Glam Shell shawl. And it is by Made in Brooklyn. And interesting thing is, is that this was free on Craftsy in a little booklet that they had available. Mm -hmm. I remember stumbling across that. You can purchase it on Ravelry or you can get it for free through Craftsy. Now I am all about supporting the designers and the work that they put into it. So there's those two options there. Um, but this was something that I had pinned at the beginning as, as the unattainable knit. Like it, it was so beautiful. I thought it was so lovely. Um, all of Emily's shawls that I saw her knitting, I was like, you know, I'm gonna need to knit some shawls. What would I knit? And this was the one. But I never did knit it, and I finally decided I should, Absolutely. I should knit it. So here so it is. Crazy. It is a lot smaller than I thought. It's, oh, I didn't trim the, the ends. This is a one skein shawl. It smells good. <laughs> um, and it's very similar in construction to this, and I knew it, it really immediately is. after, and so I kept getting confused on parts of it it's so because like, there are airy. some differences. But at the end, there's a lacy border that comes to well, it can come to really sharp points if you block it that way, and I blocked it that that way. But after wearing it for a little while, you know, it kind of softens that up. Um, so That's once again, beautiful. this is a small one. But because it's so light and airy, I think that it's the kind that you want to be small because you'd wear it more in the summertime mm -hmm. or in the spring when you don't want to be super hot. And so having something not too big is nice. That's beautiful. La, la, la. So pretty on you. Thank you. Very and lovely. this was knit in the Yarnberry Eat Me Drink Me colorway. Oh, and here's the fun thing with it. The skein I had, I was really happy that the end of the skein was darker. I wound it specifically mm -hmm. so that the end The would, darker end. It, it kind of, it started out a little bit more light. You can't see with, here's the white background. <laughs> it gets a little bit darker there, if you can tell, with more purpley speckles. So I think it looks really pretty like that. That is really pretty. So, so fun. It's very nice and soft and cozy to wear. <gasps> so many pretty airy things. Um, oh, the bind off. Yes. The bind off, I did like seven different ways. I kept binding off portions of it and then I realized it was not going to stretch enough when I went to block it and then uh -huh. I tried another way and another way and another way and then finally I was like, maybe I should read what the pattern says. <laughs> You know. Maybe. What does it say? Because <laughs> I thought I had read it and went, no, that's not going to work. Let's try something else. And then I realized, no, I didn't read it. What I Well, I did, but I thought it was a little different. So the bind off that I did, I'm not going to tell you you need to get the, the pattern, but if you follow what it says on there, it works. <laughs> Imagine that. Weird. But it does say um, that you may want to go up to larger needles, which I did go up two needle sizes to do the bind off. Mm -hmm. And I was careful to, I actually didn't have to keep it really loose. I didn't have to do that. I went up two needle sizes and I just kind of bound it off as it said, and it stretched enough. I was doing all sorts of these stretchy bind offs and everything and it, none of them were working until I finally went to the pattern and like, well, what does it suggest? That makes all the difference, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I don't just mean going to the pattern, but like having the right bind off really makes mm -hmm. a big difference, especially I, for lace. Well, and then there were some that I could have done that would have given it a more bulky edge, but because this is a fine, delicate lace, I mm -hmm. wanted it to disappear. I wanted yeah. to not notice the bind off. Right. 
So, well, it turned out just lovely. Now I've got, my goal was to knit, I call this a solid. <laughs> right, that makes sense. And this is a solid. And then, <laughs> um, I wanted, I wanted a solid kind of shawl in just about all the colors that I wear, which is just about every color of the rainbow, so that I could pair it brown. with more, no brown or gray. I don't think I've ever seen you wear brown. I used to, like 15 years ago. Yeah. I wore brown then. That's kind of like me. I'm not a brown, yeah. brown person. I, I I'm not. I have a lot of brown I'm in my really own. not. I have a couple things, but not much. I have, yeah, I like brown. I just it looks gorgeous on yeah. lots of people, just not so much yeah. on me. So I'm working my way through the rainbow, making shawls in all of the solids. Nice, in all the solids. <laughs> I like it. See, so, that's like that's like me, where this is a neutral. <laughs> well, it's because everything I wear in general is already pretty crazy. And so I need some other things that are not so Well, crazy. and that makes sense, as opposed to like something like this, where you've got color work or striping mm -hmm. or, you know, that totally, I get what you're yeah. saying. I get what you're saying. All right. Okay, so this is a really one. simple little one. This was actually my Mother's Day present to myself because I made it on Mother's Day. And okay, yeah, there we go. I just made this cute little lacy doily. I crocheted it. She's like, I think I'll crochet this. Hour later, done. It wasn't <laughs> an hour. It's probably like two and a half. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's not a difficult one. It doesn't have that Unless many rounds. Unless you're me. But that was really fun. Um, I think I made a Ravelry page. I, I'm so bad at Ravelry, you guys. But I actually made a Ravelry page, project page for this one because I don't remember any of the information. So it is on Ravelry if you want to find out. It was just a free little doily pattern. I crocheted and it goes on my little table. I think we've talked about that little table before. Mm -hmm. It's the my little round table that I always have by my knitting chair. And um, I thought, just that day I was like, this needs a lacy doily. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Wait, so, did you find a pattern or did you create the no, pattern? No, I found the pattern. Okay. So it's on Ravelry and it's free. So anyway, there it is. Isn't it cute? I mean, it's hard to show like, it's anyway. It's lovely. I didn't starch it or anything. I just blocked it and and put it on my table. And, and what did you use to crochet it? Um, it's just made from Aunt Lydia's number 10 crochet cotton thread. And the hook size and the pattern, like I said, are on Ravelry. So. If not, it will be. Go it check. is. It's on there. Okay. I made. I did. I did do it. Okay. <laughs> so that was a fun one. So I've been on a little bit of a crochet kick lately. And that's one of the things that, You'll see. that got me started. <laughs> I have been since last October on a finishing kick. Finish all the things that Which everybody really has hard started. Because you keep if you keep starting ones then it's hard too. Yeah, well I've been starting finishing everybody else's projects. Yeah. I haven't finished all of them, but I did finish two here. And these are the last two that I plan to finish of everyone else's projects, I believe. We'll see. So we have two pairs of socks. This is one. And this one. Fun. So this one was a pair that my daughter started a year or so ago. And she likes having hand knit things and she liked knitting for a little while. And then she just discovered it's really not her thing. And, but she still wanted the finished product. So I didn't mind finishing them so I could have all my stuff back. <laughs> and so these are actually for me. She had started yes. them for me. Now, if you look, one of these things is not like the other. Um, this was one of the earlier things that I had purchased, not realizing that I didn't get the same dye lot. Oh. And but it is Premier Yarns, Deborah, the Deborah Norville collection, Serenity sock weight. And the color is surf. Um, but I f didn't imagine that they would be so dramatically different. What's so different is the width of the stripes are not the same. Yeah, that's so. Really at first, I realized, oh, my gauge is different. My gauge is off. So I corrected that. I ripped it back. I corrected the gauge, 
the gauge is the same and the stripes are still different widths. Some of them are the same, like the little pink section is the same. The green is not. This teal is a little bit wider and this is quite a bit wider. And this is also not as speckled. Yeah. This is more saturated. And so I would have thought that having a different dye lot wouldn't have affected it that much, but it does. Like you might expect the colors to be slightly different, but I wouldn't have expected the I width, mean, the of, width the of the stripes because that seems to me like a design. Yeah, and the amount of speckling to be different. I would have thought that the amount of the speckling would still be the same in here, but maybe just slightly off in color. Yeah. But I don't know. I wasn't even going to finish them, and I decided that that was ridiculous because I had one and a half socks done. So just finish they're good them. for comfies and so yeah. So there is that one in this, the second the second pair. Um, this is one that my daughter Ella had started and she did a trade with Tristan from Dragon Horde Yarn. She made stitch markers in exchange for this yarn that she was just over the moon about. It's called Captain Jack Sparrow. And it was a sock set and she wanted the socks but didn't want to finish them. So I finished them for her and I loved the yarn. They're cute. So much. I enjoyed knitting these a lot. <laughs> they were really fun. That is fun. So we have two pairs of socks there that are finished. Beautiful. Okay. Let's let's All right, hear let's talk it. socks. We're talking socks. So being sick has given me like I can't there's a lot of stuff I haven't been able to do. And so I found that I've just been like almost obsessively making. And this was one of the things I ended up doing. I designed these socks, which are currently with test knitters. These are the RES socks. And they're an all over lace pattern that um, currently is only gonna be, like when I release it, it's only gonna come out originally with a 64 stitch, um, pattern option um, so it'll just be in that one size based on this gauge but you could you know size up and down based on needle size I knit this in the hedgehog fiber sock in the monarch colorway and I so just pretty. think they turned out so beautiful it is really pretty they're named after my daughter Aria and I just they're just so fun so um, the crazy thing is, is I knit, I designed and knit this sock in 24 hours <laughs> in one day. I mean, I couldn't do anything else. I'm just laying in bed, just like, but like, I was like manic. It's so fun though. I find that patterned socks and this one's really fun because the lace chart, the first time you go through it, that's the whole leg is one lace chart. Mm -hmm. So it's just really fun because you want to just just the next row just the next mm -hmm. row just get it to that next little section where it curves back in just you know so I just kept feel feeling like it wasn't taking any time at all to do them and they were really fun so anyway I have this out with test knitters right now and um, we shall see how that goes I'm planning on releasing it as long as all goes well um, in around June 15th so look for those Really I realize, and this is one of the things, I'm realizing one of the things that holds me back from designing and releasing patterns is that the, that feeling of not being able to satisfy everybody. And so I've been really stressed about only offering one size. Um, like, oh, I can't do that then. I have to, so I have to redesign the lace in order to, you know, make it yeah, in multiple for... sizes. and. And finally, I just was like, no, it's okay. I can do it in just this size. And then if people don't want that size, it's okay. Then you know, a different somebody else can do it. You know, it is 64 stitches, which is a pretty standard size. It's not going to fit everybody, but it's a, you know, a fairly standard size. So hopefully it'll be one that people can use and I'm being brave and doing it anyway. <laughs> so anyway, there they are, the Aria socks. And those were really, really delightful to do. I just thoroughly enjoyed doing that. That was really fun. Yeah, I will definitely knit some. Yay! Okay, I knit another pair of socks. Um, I cannot pronounce this because it is in another language. 
Well, the pattern isn't just. Oh, okay. Me. I'm like, it's I'm a Finnish word meaning sneaker sock. Tanarisuka. Don't ask me. Finnish is one of the hardest languages in the world, so. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if this was a free pattern or not. I don't think it was a free pattern. But I've been looking for good shorty socks because I wanted, I wanted more of no-show socks. And I made some last year that looked cute but didn't stay on very well. And so I thought I'd give this one a shot and this one was was simple and fun. So I'm going to put it on my sock blocker here so you can see it a little bit better. This is in the Captain Jack Sparrow colorway. It was the last of the yarn from my daughter's set. And look at that cute texture. It has It's adorable. I didn't block these. It has kind of these garter ridges and then this kind of honeycomb texture here. How cute. Um, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pattern repeats before I did the toe. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, so these were really fast to knit and I really like the fit of them. The one thing is I started with a larger cast on. I cast on 64 stitches. I usually wear a 60. Mm -hmm. um, but because of the area that it was supposed to stretch around, you know, this is a little bit wider than up right here. So I thought, oh, I better cast on 64 and then after at the gusset decreases, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll decrease down to 60. Um, I didn't need to do that. It's, it's too loose. Oh. And I think it would be too loose anyways because mm -hmm. it just doesn't have enough, um, stretch. So what I did is... I took some elastic thread that I doubled and I just wove it through the top and the bottom of the the Ripping. ribbing and I tried it on a couple of times to make sure that it was tight enough and not too tight and that worked out really well so I'm gonna do that on the other sock but I thought I'd show you the difference in the stretch here so it pulls it in quite a bit wow. more and it feels nice and secure. I still haven't worn these yet. I wanted to wait so I will report back on how they stay on my foot. So They're adorable. They're so and cute. And if they work well, everybody in my family wants them. Everyone <laughs> has already claimed the next pair. So <laughs> That's going to be a little challenging. I don't think they can yes. all fit in at once. The nice thing is that it takes almost, it's almost like me knitting one, one sock for a pair because the leg I typically knit as long as the foot. It's just that we have the heel flap mm -hmm. in there. So if I were to fold that in half, you know, and my my ribbing, the, top, the cuff would usually be, you know, that high. So it doesn't take that long to do. That's awesome. And that was, I oh yeah, I did tell you, Dragon Horde yarn, Captain Jack Sparrow yarn. This was her older logo on her fluffy sock base, which she I don't, she doesn't carry that one anymore. Okay. All right. Crochet, let's talk crochet. So I woke up one morning with this insanely intense desire to crochet a tote bag. And I actually identified where it came from. It took me a while to figure out because I didn't know where it was. But Wildwood Designs on Instagram had posted a pattern of a tote bag that she had designed. And I saw it, but I didn't, it was like scrolling really fast and it didn't like consciously register, just subconsciously. Anyway, so I went looking for a crochet tote bag pattern and I found this one. And this is called the Vintage Market Tote. And it's by The Lavender Chair. Um, it is linked on Ravelry. You can also just Google and find it on her website. It is a free pattern on her website, but if you don't wanna deal with the ads that are on her website, she also has a link to buy the pattern for $2 through Etsy, which I did because that just was easier for me. So anyway, 
this is the pattern and it's made with Burnett Maker Home Deck is what it's called. In fact, let me find the label. Um, as far as I can tell, this yarn is only available either online or at Michael's Craft Stores, at least here in the U.S. This is the yarn, the, the label. Um, it is a cotton and acrylic blend, mostly cotton, 72% cotton, 28% um, nylon. I said acrylic, I meant nylon. Um, and it's 250 grams. It takes one ball of this yarn, and it's kind of like t-shirt yarn, like. It's really cute. It's, it's, it's tubes. like knitted, tubes of knitted fabric. But there's like a core in there too. Anyway, it's got a little bit of, it's bouncy and stretchy and very round and plump, but it's got that little bit of give. And so a lot of times I don't really like working with cotton yarn because it's so, Kind of rigid but this was really fun to actually mm -hmm. work with i really enjoyed it so cute that is bigger than i thought that is a nice size bag so i i crocheted this one in a day and um, i added the tassel and this llama charm because look at the llama llamas Hello. oh my gosh i am so in love with that llama <laughs> okay so i finished that one and then i went to the store the next morning and i bought yarn for two more so here is the second one, <laughs> which oh has goodness. become my purse. They are so and it has a little cute. cactus on it. That cactus is so fun. Here, if I can. It's got a little flower and a little gold pot. Anyway, and what I did in this one is I have a project bag that was a very oh my goodness, that's cute. Structured, <gasps> very lined project bag. This is from a simpler home on Etsy. This is, um, oh gracious, I just forgot his name, close to Amish on Instagram, who oh, made this bag. Yes. And I had fallen in love with this, so I bought this. The only thing was that this, it was a little bit stiff for me for a project bag, um, because I usually stick my project bags just like right in my purse, and I kind of want them to kind of smush in there a little bit. And so and I, I like stiff project bags. <laughs> I haven't used it a ton yet, and then when I made this, bag I'm like oh these things go together so it's a perfect size. I just stuck that right in here and this is now my purse Peeks through the you color see all that cute fabric oh my gosh I love this bag if you can't tell that is so really cute em. I made this one on um Thursday I think I like that teal made this one on Thursday I made this one on Friday <laughs> <laughs> then I made this one <laughs> this one's a gift for my sister-in-law because she saw the first one I made and decided she wanted one too now this just has a temporary little charm on it it's a cute little kitten I'm not really an a big animal person um and I mean I don't, I'm not opposed to him but I don't have pets my kids are all allergic we have a couple goldfish that's that's it for us but my sister-in-law is a cat person. Her, her cats are her kids, and she works at a veterinary office. She loves cats. And so I had this that came, oh, there goes the <laughs> siren. That's, you're just used to that. I don't right? notice them until we podcast. I'm like, <laughs> that was awful lot. <clears throat> this was actually in my, um, what am I trying to say? My advent. Um, gift exchange that I got from my friend Kimberly and uh, it just was perfect for my sister-in-law she's going on a Hawaii vacation oh, and so perfect. Perfect. she was admiring this bag so that I made her this one so today's Wednesday so in five five days because I finished this yesterday in five days I made three of these so if I get some more you could have made <laughs> well, it comes in coral, I found out, but I have to get the coral. <laughs> oh, gracious. I have to take a little break from crochet, actually, because my arm hands. is just killing me. Yeah. And so I have to take a break. But what I've been doing with this bag is using it to hold this project bag from Daisy Girl Designs. Um, because guess what? I stick it in here. 
and suddenly it's a shoulder bag and I can carry my project right on my shoulder. And then you've got that little bit of yellow poking through. Yeah, you can see tiny bits of the fabric color poking through and it's just very cute. It's so good. Oh, that shell pattern. Isn't that cute? It's really fun. Now, a fun thing is, is that the designer of this, again, I don't know what her name is, but her website's The Lavender Chair. She has another one that is almost identical to the, I mean, it's very, very similar in construction and look, it has little um, like shells made out of little puff stitches. Mm -hmm. And so it's got a little bit more texture. So there's also that option. I like that one. That but one's cute. It's just a fun one, one skein. If you buy, if you have a Michaels anywhere near you, they have 40% coupons off all the time. And so you could make this bag sans the charm for six dollars so can't just a that. fun 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 project love it so that has been a blast good job and in I fact approve. thank you in fact i think i'm gonna design I, I love this bag so much i'm kind of like obsessed with it i think i'm gonna design a pattern to make like the perfectly fitting fabric insert into it and then that's a good idea just make it free to anybody who wants it if I actually get to that point I'll at least design it for me whether I get to the point of as long as they have making the exact it reproducible same gauge. well yeah I mean that'll be based on my my measurements and just say hey this is what I did but yeah anyway so fun but that would also be nice to put something on the straps I uh, yeah be especially when if you're gonna use it like a purse because this is heavy yeah you've got a and lot I've of even in taken there. out I usually have my um, bullet journal with apparently a bunch of stuff falling out of it, which is more weight, and I usually add that in there too. So it's definitely a heavier one, and you can see this one is stretched out a lot, but I, it's just so boho and cute and adorable, and I love it. I love it. Do they have black? I don't think so. Maybe. Oh, that was with a really vibrant Like color a really like almost neon behind would it. would be so fun. Cause you know how I feel about black. I, you know, it's <laughs> funny because I really thought that this would be my favorite, but the white, I mean, well, it's, and I forgot to mention, this is color is called cream. This color is called aqua. Very inventive. But anyway, um, keeping it simple. So really, I really, like really fun, <laughs> but it's very funny to go from crocheting with bulky cotton and then back to like sock knitting. <laughs> all my other projects, like all my knitting projects right now are either fingering or lace weight. So yeah. it's just a very different thing. Well, it does go a lot faster. Crochet. Oh yeah. And just zip through it. Weight, so. so fast. They're really cute. I'm going to have to find some of the yarn and see if I can make it work. They're or fun. come sit next to you and have you help me. They're fun. That's <laughs> my, our Aunt Mary texted me. She's like, I want to come sit next to you and have you help me crochet one of those bags. And I know her, which means she wants me to crochet her a bag. <laughs> she wants, no. She, she wants, wants to, to do it, but that's not what But it do. doesn't usually work out quite that way, but she does want to do those she things. She does. And she crochets a lot, so. She does? I didn't know yeah. that. Well, she, she makes like the granny square blankets okay. for her grandkids. So she just, you know, where you do the square and you just keep making it bigger and bigger until mm -hmm. you get just a really big granny square. Okay. So, I mean, like, she knows how to crochet. She's very capable. Anyway. Okay. Here we go. I have done it. I have finished. I'm so excited this. to see this. Also. This is my Petals and Pico shawl. Oh, I have to take off my sweater. By Swift warm. Yarns. And... I ran out of beads before doing the large size, so oh, I got no. the medium, which I was perfectly happy with because you were ready about to be halfway done? through, I was so done. When I started <laughs> this project, I knew it was going to be an exercise in patience and endurance, and I chose it for that reason, so that I would stretch and grow, and I did. So I persevered, and I have finished this I will see if I can put it on there are over 600 beads oh, on this wow. and it has this pico edging but they are a lot, a lot larger so it's almost fringy kind of thing yeah. but I wore this um, last weekend on Mother's yeah. Day last weekend or was it the weekend did um, you wear it on Mother's Tuesday? Day no oh um, anyways 
So oh, we're gonna so get it, pretty. we gotta get it looped around here. I gotta get it adjusted just right. You know when you put these shawls on that you spend, if you're anything like me, you spend a little bit of time doing the adjusting and getting it just right. But anyways, oh, that's lovely. And then getting these edges spread out so you see kind of the picos, but we'll just leave it at that for right now. Look how pretty. So, I didn't end up with the large one, which in the end I think is just fine because the size it is, I like. And I thought that the beads, somebody had mentioned that the beads are cold in the winter. Well, I wore it on a very cold day and it actually warmed up against my neck. The beads warmed up and didn't bother me at all. So that's great. I have finished it and it's another solid. <laughs> this one is, yeah, other is. than the beads, this one's more of a solid. Um, wrap so I have another one to add to my collection. I made both of these to match a dress that I had made and the dress turned out really crummy. Oh, I was gonna wear it today. I actually had it on but I just was like, mm, I'm just not feeling it. Now I, when I came over the other day you said you were fixing it. Did I it had work? spent a lot of time working on adjustments on it but it's just for my it's body shape together. is not a really great fit. Hmm. So anyways, that's frustrating. It's sad because I love the fabric. That was me with this blouse I was trying to make a while back and I finally just I put it on and I just laughed and I'm like, what made me think that this was going to be something I would like for myself? Like the fabric is beautiful, but mm -hmm. wearing it, it it literally looks like a grandma from 1969 in her house dress. Like it is like not, not flattering, not cute, not the right shape. <laughs> so I let it go. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably wear it. It's just the fit around my waist and the back. It's, it's because it's a wraparound dress and then all the different adjustments that, because honestly, nobody is shaped like the patterns. No. Um, and I had to make so many ridiculous adjustments because I'm pretty much just straight up and down, but patterns are not like that at all. And mm -hmm. so to try to create the shape that I, I'm straight up and down from the front, from the side, I'm not, I look a little different, but you have like a human shaped body, which means like figure. flexible. Yeah. So not the same for everybody. <laughs> Like a 12 year old boy from the front and like a 40 year old woman from the side. That's what I look like. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Depends on a 12 year old boy. <laughs> Anyways. So it just, uh, I'll, I'll probably still wear it, just not that much. Yeah. So understand all right that's my finished objects i have one more i don't know if okay. i can count i'm going to count this as a finished object although i'll probably show it again later you should call it a half finished object okay it's a half finished object which you know this yeah anyway so also in the same amount of time that i crocheted these three bags i made a quilt top yay <laughs> look at this i can't even show it to you it's a really simple pattern called the Fat Quarter Fizz Quilt, and you can find it um, for free. There's a free PDF online. And all you do is you take fat quarters and you cut them up in, in fairly large pieces. I made this with Riley Blake Fabrics. The collection is called the Arbor Blossom, and it's just got a lot of fun pinks and turquoises and blues and like really pale yellow. And um, I have done very little quilting like this because usually the only quilts I make are more pieced blocks and um, then I hand quilt them but I've actually decided to put this one together and I'm going to have it quilted by a long arm quilter um have you found and so one? it'll be yes I have although I'm open to suggestions I was gonna say I need to deal. hear because I've got like four quilts that need to be done I talked to our but... friend Lily and she gave me some recommendations okay. and then I called and talked to somebody and so um I'm gonna take this and have it quilted by a long arm quilter so it'll be quilted all over with kind of stippling with little hearts in it 
and the idea is that it should be a really usable quilt. A lot of my quilts are kind of treasures and I don't, like I'm kind of really stingy with my kids using them. But the problem is that then they're always folded up and put away and I want to have beautiful things out and about and in my home. Um, and so I wanted to have just a really pretty throw quilt for the family room that could be, you know, while you're watching TV. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I just went with the simple one and we're gonna do the all over quilting. And um, so I just need to get my back and then take it in and it'll be really fun. But I've never done this before. Like we really, I, I, I've pretty much, I mean, I know you've done quite a bit of machine quilting, mm -hmm. but even that I haven't really done. I haven't, I've tried it a little bit, but I have not enjoyed it at all. And so it's I, just not yeah, been my I thing. Yeah, I didn't enjoy on on my own personal machine. Yeah. I did it because it needed to be done. Right. But I didn't like it. So I want to have more quilts and I'm getting older. I can decide if I want to spend my money on that instead of just hand quilting. I love hand quilting. I love hand quilting. I like the process of hand quilting. Yes. When there's other people around yes. that join you like a quilting bee. Well, and even just the process of quilting, if it's a smaller quilt and I'm doing it on my own, I even enjoy that. But I just, I want more quilts, and so I can't do them all. <laughs> that's, so. that's the problem I have, and I only have so much, I would say, hand time. Time that yes. I can use my hands for these types of things, and so I like budget it out mm -hmm. to certain projects, and the quilting never even makes it on the list, the yeah. hand quilting. And so my quilt tops have been sitting in drawers and mm -hmm. bins for years. So I'm gonna go get this one done. And I'm excited to it's do that. It's going to be really I'll fun. I'll probably take it in next week, and it'll be like another week or two, she said. So it's I'm a fun one. I'm excited to see but it. But I have, I have this other set. I put it on Instagram, another collection that has the red and white polka dots in it. I love this it. fabric right there. Isn't that cute? Really I really cool. like this little one, too, and it's in a few different colors. So it's this one right here. And then here it is with the pink flowers and little blue mm. kind of acorns. Yeah, the one you have with the red and white polka dots. So I'm in love with cute. that one and I've had so it for cute. a long time, but I just, when I bought it, I kind of went, oh, this looks like a quilt top-ish amount. I mean, I didn't like have this very specific thing for it. Um, and so I know I have enough fabrics, but I don't know what I want to piece with it yet. And so that's why I did this one first mm -hmm. because I knew I wanted to try this fat quarter fizz quilt for the family room and that worked better with that bundle. And it was nice because I got these fabrics on 50% off. I like a good deal. Fabulous. I love a good deal. But isn't that fun? It'll be adorable. See, there's been several times where I thought, I'm just going to use these scraps and I'm going to make a quilt so that it can, I wouldn't feel bad if we sat on it on the grass yeah. for a picnic. Or, I've done a few of those and then I end up loving them so much that I'm like, no, don't touch the quilt. I know. So. Well, and the other thing is like my, I you know, our youngest that. kids are now 10 and 11 years old. So. We don't have babies at home and mm -hmm. even though, you know, teenagers are still hard on stuff, it's different. It's a different kind of thing. Like in general, I can, I was realizing this, I put one of my projects out on the, my ottoman with like the pattern and the yarn and the project and the needles and they were all sitting there and it was like that for two days. Like nobody touched it. You know, when you're when you're a young mom with little kids, you can't leave anything out, no. you know. And so we're just in a different phase of life now. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, woohoo, this is awesome. Yeah. So I can I can have some nicer things and I'm getting to the point where it's time to do that. So <laughs> all right. I think okay. that's it. For that's finished. all of your finished objects? Yes, that was only one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. So that's not too bad. Emily, you're you're falling behind. I know. <laughs> well, I literally have done that. Oh, eight. I've literally done nothing but make stuff for the past couple of weeks. So. All right. Before we go on to um, works, works in, in progress, progress, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the Great Basin Fiber Arts yeah. Fair that I went to last weekend. It was Mother's Day weekend, um, and. I had signed up to volunteer at the information table at the fair. As Emily part of was, the knitting guild yeah, here. Yeah, Emily was going to come with me and I had to do it alone. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's fine. I'm just a little <laughs> bit emotionally scarred, but I'm okay. So, anyways, but I thought, well, if I'm going to be there, that I should, I knew that Christy and Tristan from 
Girls in the Yarn Cafe were having a booth and I thought I should see if I could go and help them with their booth. So I offered to go and help them set up, which they ended up doing it on a different day than I thought, so I didn't go help them with that. So I went and sat in their booth to help. I was so helpful. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was so helpful <laughs> that, that I'm like, I'm just gonna go sit in the back corner and not help anymore. <laughs> Instead, I just visited with them and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to hang out with them. And the fun part about hanging out with them was sitting and staring at all of their gorgeous yarn for two days on end. And so I went thinking, okay, I'm gonna buy like this much yarn and left with this much yarn. Um, anyways, I have a few of them here. Not, this wasn't all from Dragon Horde Yarn and um, Yarn Cafe Creations, but this is most of what I purchased there. And there was a really cute new um, dyer. Her name is Alicia, and she is owns Hole in the Wool Yarn Company. And the fun thing with this, I found when I came across her booth, I asked if she was local, because not everybody is um, that, that sells there. And she says, yeah, I live in Magna. You live in Magna? I We grew up in Magna, and I was asking where, and it was very close to where we grew up, and it turns out that she knows my parents, and my parents know their family, and it was just really fun that, you that know, it's a, it's a small world. So I got this beautiful skein, it's called Rosemore, and it is a superwash merino cashmere nylon base, and it is so lovely. It looks beautiful. It is so lovely. Um, and... Then, of course, from Yarning Apart, I bought some last year from Yarning Apart. Look how pretty. That's gorgeous. <gasps> you can tell. <laughs> you don't like, yeah, you don't like those colors at all. <laughs> um, so, it's Jody and Annie at Yarning Apart, and they had their Angora bunnies there again. Oh. And um, they let me kidnap one of their bunnies for like half an hour, and I walked around the fair with it. <laughs> Well, she also is following me behind to make sure that I didn't kill the bunny, but... <laughs> <laughs> or keep it. <laughs> or keep it. Oh, they're so cute. So cute. Uh, and the yarn's just beautiful, as always. Gorgeous. And then from Dragon Horde Yarn, I bought these skeins. Beautiful. I mean, look at this yellow. That is a gorgeous yellow. I got the only two. She says that they were just the only ones that she was dying and so I had to get them both. This one's really pretty too. Love them. Love them. Love them all. So this one is Siren's Song and this one is Sunflower. This one is Spring Awakening. And it has just little tiny blips of a pale pink and some greens and grays. Anyways, very pretty. This one is Spaz Attack. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, and then I got another one that she had there, but I got it like the week before um, that was just really pretty. And I kept going and picking it up every time. I'm like, what is this one? She's like, Deborah, you already own it. And then I was, <laughs> she moved things around. And then I was like, what is it? She's like, Deborah, this is like the fifth time. You already own that one. <laughs> so, and then this one, ooh, ooh Mermaid gorgeous. Party from Yarn Cafe Creations. That's gorgeous. Love it. Look at those Ooh. together. This that with looks, that. Oh, that's pretty. Those are pretty. Oh my goodness. Love so it. lovely. Love and then you brought me, and I didn't think to bring it with me over here today, but she brought me a Mother's Day present from Yarn Cafe. From Yarn Cafe Creations. It was the Jezebels from her new Handmaid's Tale collection. So yes, that was that one. Gorgeous. And then there was another booth there that I took pictures of, um, or just a little short video, that was right next to Girls in the Yarn Cafe um, booth. And it was Friendly Gathering Fiber Arts. And she, her name is Summer Hope, and she dyes um, fiber for spinning as well as yarn. But she just had fiber there this time, and her colors are just so cheerful and bright and fun it was just like spring in the booth mm. it was so pretty especially it was nice because it was storming and so cold there and then you go to her booth and everything was just happy and cheerful and bright so um those were a few of the 
the dyers and the booths that I visited while I was there. That's really fun. And it was it was fun. Oh, and of course there were some really sweet ladies that came by. They flew in from oh, out of I know. town, and so I got to have lunch with um, Robin and Anna Robin. And sorry, I keep calling her Robin. She <laughs> says everybody calls her Robin. It's Anna Robin. Uh huh. And oh my goodness, my mind just is a blank. This is really embarrassing. Jerry. Yep. Good job. Good job. <laughs> sorry. I was so jealous because I saw that they came and. Yeah. Anyway, so that was I'm fun. We we spent time with them at Stitches West, and so it was fun that we got to spend time together again. That's awesome. And I met some new people, so that was lots of fun. Lovely. All right, let's go into um, our works in progress. All right, I, I don't have three. I think I have. What did I say? I said I had three. Three. Yeah. One. Yes. Okay. Okay. You too. You go, you I go have first. got a pair. Wait, just a minute. <laughs> I should have waited on that to not start another round. Okay, I've got a pair of socks for my husband, and I picked these up while we were on our trip. Just worked on on this sock. I told him I was going to get it done for him to wear camping, but since I started it when we were almost leave, done and ready to go home, I didn't. Know. <laughs> That's not a good idea. You're going camping more. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, this yarn is the Romeo Colorway by Yarn Brary. The Yarn Brary. And I think this is a perfect name. It is perfect for my husband because his favorite colors are blue and green. And this is uh, just different blues. Teal and navies. And yeah. Uh, so that's perfect for him. I think I need and to dye that again. That's really pretty. You said you weren't going to ever do it I know. Again. I said I wasn't. But I'm like, maybe I'll just need to do it anyway. It's so pretty. Yeah. It's such a good yarn such a good color with these speckles in there I'm just doing a plain vanilla sock I did 68 stitches my husband he typically likes 64 but I think it just stretches too much across his mm -hmm. foot and like and he likes it to be tight but I'm like I don't think it has to be that tight it's not so supposed I to thought, cut off your circulation yeah these are not compression socks so <laughs> I thought I'll just knit some have him try it on I won't tell him that I changed anything mm -hmm. and just say okay how do they fit and he's like yeah it fits great there you okay. go so I didn't knit the leg eight inches long like I did on the last pair because since I added more stitches I knew that with the last one I had like six grams left mm. um well, I did use a 20 gram. I, I added it up and it, it was like 94, something like 94 grams total. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough to knit both socks. So I did a seven inch leg instead of an eight inch leg. And I did one by one. Actually, you did the one by one rib for 25 rows. And then I did the rest. That was at our book club, wasn't it? Yep. We showed up for book club and I went, oh, I don't have really... any knitting. <laughs> Deborah's like, here you go. <laughs> like luckily for you, I brought two. <laughs> Knit this sock. <laughs> so there's the first sock. Wonderful. Okay, this work in progress. Wait, is you I'm, do the same I'm in the thing same. As I, well, no, I actually, I just dropped a stitch, so I was having to fix it. This work in progress is not that exciting because it's barely in progress. It's Hold very on. exciting because the color is really fun. The suspense, everybody, we're building up the here suspense go. here. I'm actually casting on a second pair of RAS socks, so I'm kind of testing Ooh. my own pattern and can have more colors for the um, photos and so on. And this is Yarn Brary Classic Sock in the LM Montgomery colorway. Isn't that lovely? Just so pretty. I think I need a sweater out of this, actually. Love it. Just like a really simple, simple cardigan that you can throw on with anything, kind of a sweater. Oh, that's so pretty. It is pretty. Sorry. I, like I it. love that color. Anyway. <laughs> and it's so, anyway, I'm that far into it. <laughs> Not very far. I just started this morning. Okay, that's a good start. Good start. My other two works in progress are much more interesting than that one. Yeah, that's very interesting. It will be color. interesting once we get farther in. <laughs> okay. Oh, that goes in here. We both have our bags. I know, that's funny. We didn't find that. <laughs> I love that bag. It's so cute. <laughs> um, in my bag, I also have a sock. So I have not really done many socks. I was thinking 
I'm just not doing very much sock knitting this year. Yeah, I didn't do like anything. Socks, I went and counted. Socks, socks, socks. I have six <laughs> pairs finished, I think, and it, we're in the fifth month. So you're still like I didn't do any, and then all of a sudden, oh, right. It. <laughs> so, and one was a shorty, so that's really only like one. Sock I think I've only done three pairs of socks so far this year. I'm working on the fourth. So, but in here. Oh my, goodness. oh my word, Look that's at this fun. Yarn. <gasps> Look at that goes so perfectly with that bag, too. Okay. This did yarn, you wind this or did I it come wound it? With? Yes. Yeah. Um, it was in the hank, and uh -huh. I, I could wound it into a skein, but I wanted to wind it into a ball because it's yeah, so pretty like that. Yeah, like a stopper kind of This ball. was from the Vesper Sock Yarn, um, sorry, Knitterly Things Rainbow of the Month Club. So Looks that cute I did with my last purple year. nails, just so you know. And this one <laughs> was the Some Some Summertime colorway. It's got sparkle in it. Yes, and I was pairing it with this mini, Whoa. but I don't know where I got this mini from, honestly. Oh. But it also has sparkle in it. So, so here cute. is what I've got so far. Let me get it, because I think it's so cute. We have to we have to have the bag. And you got to have it ready. So fun. I love this one. Oh, you're doing a cute little... Um, I'm just doing a slip stitch. I knit... When the color changes, I knit two, slip one, knit two, slip one, knit two, slip one. Fun. Um, it doesn't always work because sometimes the color changes halfway through the row mm -hmm. on the front, but for the most part, it works. And I just did one full color repeat from here to here. Love it. Okay, so you see I'm cute. doing toe-up socks. Yes, you are. I never do toe. I can't say never. This is my third mm -hmm. third pair. I haven't um, done a pair yet. I want to be very comfortable where I don't have to stop and think about it. Like yeah, like I do with other socks. I don't even have to think about it. I just just cast on and start knitting. So I'd like to get to that point with this. Um, what I am seeing is that now the reason I want to do toe up is first of all, there's a lot of patterns that are toe up that you could convert them the other way around, but why if you can knit them toe up the way the patterns are written? But also, if you divide the skein in half and you start at the toe and you just knit until the yarn's gone, you don't have to worry about running out. So for my husband specifically, where he wants his to be as long as possible, that would be really nice. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of doing increases. Decreases, they're so simple. I don't have to think about it. Increases I feel like are more fiddly, hmm. but I really like how tidy the increases are. They are compared to decreases on a sock. Um, I don't know when it's stretched out. I don't know that you can really see it, but it's just really neat and tidy. Are you using make ones? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Like make, make one, one right, right to make, make one, one. Left. Yeah. Yes, and I did a Turkish cast on, which is so easy. I did the other two pair were like Judy's Magic cast on, mm -hmm. Turkish cast on. Okay, so I'm writing it down. Easy. Turkish cast by cast far on. I don't the know easiest. Um, there's a tutorial that we will link to. You'll have to remind me, Emily, to send okay. you a link to that that I used for it. I mean, so smooth. It's a little bit large right there because I went and. Um, wove in my tail right across the toe um, because I thought that that might be kind of strengthening on there so that's why it's a little bit bigger. That's a good idea. So it's really easy to do that. That's a super cute so. color. I but love those like Oh, they're like cheerful. kind of neat. I don't even know what's so, right The word. name of this colorway, Some Some Summertime. Yeah. Perfect name for it. Perfect name. They're like popsicles. Yeah. Yes. Like grape popsicle mm. and blue raspberry and lime and <laughs> <laughs> love it. Green apple. Anyway. So I am very happy with that. That's so fun. Okay, there's Alrighty. There's my sock. Yeah, so I didn't really knit any socks and now all of a sudden there's a bajillion here. Fun. I don't exaggerate a bajillion. A bajillion. Well my my <laughs> one that I always say is eight hundred million, so <laughs> All right, so this pattern that I'm about to show you um, was inspired by Amber Lindemann's last episode of her podcast. She's doing a knit along, and I don't remember the exact name of it. I apologize, but I think it's um, something like Unsung, Unsung Heroes. Heroes. The idea is to knit something um, from a pattern on Ravelry that has less than 20, 30. less than 30 projects. 
and um, I had already I had this pattern in my favorites um, for a, quite a while and it's called the Bluebird Cardi it says up here winged knits I think there was actually kind of a, a series of patterns but this one is the Bluebird Cardi and it's by Cecily Glowick McDonald and it's a very very simple um, short sleeve kind of cap sleeve open cardigan with a lace border at the bottom and it's um, just you know very like I said very simple um, this is knit bottom up which is not something I have done a lot of I mean I've done it I know how to do it it's not different but it's just been a different experience and I'm knitting this in my Harriet Smith it's a messy cake but Harriet Smith colorway from my Emma collection um, which has some turquoise and mint and little flecks of rose in it. So it's a cropped length cardigan, plus it's rolling. So it's kind of hard to tell and you're, it's not done yet. So this is what I have so far. <laughs> so I've knit the lace, these are the fronts here, folded in, you know, folded in half. It's got the lace at the bottom and then you knit the fronts, divide pretty. for the sleeves and then knit the two fronts. And now I'm working on the back here. And I'm just, it's really delightful. It's very simple. I just, I've been making so many other things I haven't given this very much attention, but it's kind of the one that's come to the forefront of my attention now. So I expect I'll kind of whiz through it pretty quickly here. Anyway, so it's fun. I am alternating skeins throughout because it's hand dyed yarn and so I don't really want any major pooling. I've knit socks with my speckles and I haven't had any pooling, but everybody, no matter what you, any kind of hand dyed or commercial, variegated or speckly yarn can pool depending on the gauge. So mm -hmm. you're just gonna have to know to alternate skeins, but isn't that lovely? So this is gonna be really fun. Just a light, really simple short sleeve sweater to put on over things. Um, when we were talking earlier about this, the uh, lattice, what is the word I'm looking for? Mesh, this kind of mesh and garter stitch. I'm actually thinking that when I finish this one, I might go back and make the same idea of a pattern again, use the kind of schematic for this pattern and do this kind of a stitch Pattern. That may fall down. Huh? We have this precariously. Oh yeah, don't pull on it. Anyway, <laughs> this kind of stitch pattern in more of a semi-solid, because I just like to have lots of little cardigans. And I think Especially that that would be- in neutrals like that. Well, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this one is definitely not a neutral. This one's definitely not going to be something that's going to go with everything because of the variegated, I mean, the speckly yarn. Um, it will go with a lot though. It will. With what you were. I and I won't really care if it doesn't. I'll probably wear it anyway, because whatever. But I do want to do that one in like a, maybe maybe that yellow, the L.M. Montgomery for a pretty little cardigan. That would be really so, cute. I like that one. That is fun. All right. My last work in progress is also for the Unsung Hero Cow. Fun. Um, I am knitting the China Rose Wrap designed by Tabitha Hedrick for Sweet Georgia patterns. Cute, cute, cute. It is a, it has an interesting construction to it where you cast on on the point, you knit this direction, and then when you get to the lace, you knit this direction, and then you decrease and knit back to the other point oh. to create a rectangular shawl. Fun. Um, and the colors that I am using, the colorway, these two beautiful skeins. Lovely, lovely, lovely. What? Sorry, oh, I thought you were getting something. Um, this one is one that Emily gave me for my birthday. It's one that she dyed in one of a kind colorway. I love mm -hmm. it. And this one is by Yarn Cafe Creations, and it is um, Barb, is the colorway. <laughs> and they go together perfectly. Very pretty. Perfectly. And what's interesting is that I didn't mean to when I picked this pattern, but I picked pretty much the same colors. You really did, actually. I, I mean, yeah. it, 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 I didn't do it on purpose, but I'm happy because I love the pattern and I like how it looks there. So this is what I have done so far. 
That's really pretty. So it will be like this. Here is where we change direction. And I start knitting this direction now. You know, it's so interesting when designers do that. Like, my brain hasn't figured that kind of thing out. Like, I wouldn't know to just be like, oh, we're going to go this way. Now we're going to go that way. And then and the once end, it I all start comes knitting it, I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Right. I see exactly how you're, you know. Yeah. So, so I love that. But I, this pattern, I feel like is missing some information. Mm. So one thing, if you were to knit this, it starts with two stitches. You cast on two stitches and then you increase to four their increase doesn't really work because they didn't give you like the setup row they mm. just gave you the pattern repeat and the repeat works for more stitches than two so gotcha. if you were to knit this with your first two stitches and you need to increase to four i just did a knit front back knit front back that's what i did because the other one doesn't work it doesn't make any sense so if you were going to do that um you know, if you were going to knit one, that's what I did. And then I got a little bit confused on the striping section. I don't know where I got mixed up, but it has these garter ridges between the narrow, darker stripe. It should have three. I did two. Mm. So my concern with this... Is are you going to run out of this yarn? There are so few... Um, projects on here and none of them have notes as to how much yarn it took including mm -hmm. this pattern it just says a single skein of each one it doesn't say did it use every bit of it is there any you know like nothing about that so I don't really know um, and then somebody on Instagram that I follow just finished one and I asked her and I forgot to ask her how many yards she had to begin with but she said that she had like three meters of one and one meter of the other. Oh dear. So am I going to run out of this darker one because I've used more of it? Yeah. So if that's the case, then I can not do... Because this can, is not a repeatable colorway. <laughs> then what I can do, but I won't know, honestly. Right. I think I'm just going to have to shorten the lace section a tiny bit, just a mm -hmm. little bit on the end and pray that I make it to the end. If not, I'm going to have to rip back and do less of the or lace find section. a complimentary and make it a three color shawl if I do uh, I don't think I really want to do that yeah. I, I really like this so I just would have to do a little bit shorter that's all so I just I hope because I could go back rip this out and start again but if I do that I honestly I don't think I'll do it again no I'm not true. I don't like yeah I probably wouldn't do it again so I'm just gonna continue on that's going to be pretty. That's going to be really pretty. Hope that that will work out okay. So, I like it. But this lace section is not one that I can remember, honestly. It's not hard. I just can't remember it because it has almost the exact same pattern. It's just each one. It's like, oh, start with a knit one. Oh, start with a knit two. Oh, end with a knit one. End with a knit. Like, I, I get them mixed up. Mm. So, I have to follow it so closely every single yeah. time so this is one that I don't just now that I'm to the lace that I have to just focus on the whole time that's how it was when I was knitting that um, flowers for Yvonne shawl like the whole time I was glued to the chart yeah. I really hate that yeah but it's it's very pretty it's not hard like I said it's just because the, the each row is so close to the other one that I get them mixed up mm -hmm. so there's my last oh, one in my really cute. Oh. It says little Taylor S bag, which is now you. Dandelion and Dogwood. Amy, who's just lovely. You should see her new branding and her she's new doing all sorts of like are boho so kind of look that's just oh, I know. She said she was gonna knit one of the or crochet one of these bags. And I'm really interested to see because she'll do something to it to make it gorgeous if she does it. Yeah. Alright, so Speaking of flowers for Yvonne, I'm not knitting flowers for Yvonne again, but this is a <laughs> Romy Hill. No, this is not. I'm lying. Okay. There is a story. There is a reason I brought this up. <laughs> brought that up. When I started the flowers for Yvonne shawl, I was originally thinking of a friend of mine who um, lives in my neighborhood 
and she is like one of the few people I know who has always worn shawls like she wears them all the time and um, she's always cold and she just you know she looks so beautiful in them and so I had originally bought the yarn I made for that, that flowers for Yvonne shawl out of to make a shawl for this friend of mine her name is Jan um, and then I ended up it ended up being one of those projects that took way longer was a lot more involved and really was just meant to be for my mom and so um i made that for her but then i decided to make this one for my friend jan and so this is this um, pattern is called the elizabeth shawl it's by d o'keefe and it's part of her lace triangle collection and that's there's not a lot of pictures in this specific pattern because it is part of kind of a a collection of i think four or five different shawl patterns and I've only printed out the ones for this the pages for this pattern um, it's just a beautiful triangle lace shawl made with lace weight yarn and this was a new base that I wanted to test and see if I wanted to start carrying it I don't know how much of it I will carry because I just haven't gotten a lot of feedback about people wanting lace weight but I love it it is a single ply superwash merino this is in my Charles Dickens colorway and this is how far I am and it, it just feels very pretty like a cloud like it that feels like it's color. hardly there color is gorgeous I love this color I love it wow <laughs> that is wait now I have to hold it up next to <laughs> that one? your to what no I had a different one in mind now I can't remember it's just kind of a wine color anyway and um so oh, that's where I oh, am on it. I was it. thinking of. No, not quite the Not same. quite. This one's a little okay. too wine. That one yeah. needs more of a vibrant purple. But it's just so pretty. And um, this pattern has a total of eight charts, but a couple of them are border charts. I am on chart number five. I'd say I'm about two-thirds of the way done I mean as far as length like from top to bottom it's more than that but you have so many more stitches with every row that the number of stitches left to do I probably still have a third of the stitches left but that's where I am on it and it's just lovely and you know what I had wondered if it was lace weight that I didn't like to do but it was really the yarn that I was working with because this superwash um, merino single ply is just lovely to knit with it doesn't mm -hmm. go flying off your needles and it looks really pretty and it's going to be drapey it's soft I just did not enjoy working with that tencel yarn even though it turned out yeah stunning. I was gonna say the result was, it was gorgeous just amazing but it was not enjoyable to knit with <laughs> but this one has been quite lovely but now I'm getting to the point where I kind of sit down and do like a lace and then return row and then I put it away and go work on something else you know mm -hmm. or I just haven't it the, the rows are quite really long, long now with hundreds and hundreds of stitches on the needles and so it it's just not something that I because it does take my attention I don't work on it like constantly so it's kind of slowed down now this. Or once. it's but. really pretty and those are That's all of my works in progress other than well, everything I brought for now. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we have a lot of other projects, but there's blankets. I've actually don't need put to see everything. I put the like world. ten squares in my blanket and Good. things like that. But. Yeah, remember how I was going to knit one per week, one mm -hmm. square. Well, then I got obsessed with a couple of other things. Like, <laughs> I went, okay. yeah, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I yeah I don't even know that maybe I want to do blanket. a crocheted scrappy blanket and so I'm just forcing myself to wait on that until I get my mitered square blanket to the point where it can sit for a while because right now I have like unfinished rows and stuff so you gotta that make sense. I want to finish out. the rows 
once I finish the row I'm on, then it will be an actually quite nice lap size blanket and mm -hmm. I'll just let it sit for a while and go work yeah. on something. Well, I always say, how many projects do I have on the go? And then I never even think about the blankets. Mm -hmm. But because of that, they never really get work done. And I told mm -hmm. you the crochet one, I don't think I'm going to finish. I had somebody that yeah. was so kind that volunteered to finish it for me, do the crochet part of it. But I don't even think I'm going to get to that point. So I think, because I am one for finishing projects. You are. I can't think of, I have some quilt tops. I mean, I finished the quilt tops. Mm-hmm. Um, they haven't been quilted, but I can't think really of projects that I have not finished. I mm -hmm. always end up finishing them. And that one, I think I probably just won't. And maybe the squares that I have done that are not crocheted around, I can just stitch those together and they can be a quilt, just it's a little yeah. quilt or something. Or, or you could just, make a project, a, pa I could do a patchwork project bag for your sister. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, because <laughs> I need one of those market totes, so. <laughs> this could um, happen. <laughs> so anyways, I am thinking about that and my pinwheel blanket. I like doing the pinwheel blanket, but I think I need to just get it to a like baby size mm -hmm. and then just be done with that because I actually have the rest of my year in projects planned out and. That it, would be so oppressive to me. You know what? It's normally that would be I like to just knit whatever yeah. is coming up next, but I'm really excited. Well, that's good. For what? Yeah. Like I I don't like to have 400 projects on the go. And when mm -hmm. we started podcasting, um I just kept adding in another project, another project to get really excited seeing other um, yeah. podcasters and and over like since last October, I finally realized I don't feel good that way. Mm -hmm. I feel frustrated and stressed because I'm not making a lot of progress and I feel like they're weighing me down because mm -hmm. they're not done instead of making me feel you inspired. Know, inspired. Or, so yeah. I decided that I just want to knit on one or two at a time. I have three right now with the socks um, and I feel like that's the max yeah. for me. So I want to not have the blankets on the go because they still do sit in the back of my mind there you know mm -hmm. but I have a lot of things I want to do so I need to just I like to focus in on something get it done and then I can do the next one but I can enjoy what I'm working on more you know than yeah than starting all of them and having well, them and stress I, me. I think you and I talked about this before that we don't want to have kind of a consumeristic attitude toward our knitting we want to have more of a creator mm -hmm. Um, attitude and so if you kind of start feeling like well whatever you're working on is never good enough it's always the next thing that's more exciting sometimes yeah. that does take out when you really look at it, it takes out a lot of the joy of it yeah but for me I'm totally fine having multiple I mean I don't want to have ten but you know four or five is mm -hmm. probably pretty comfortable for me and socks almost don't count in that because I don't feel stress about socks. They're just the thing to pick up whenever I need to like go somewhere and do it. So it doesn't really bother me to have lots of socks on the go. I do like I only having have one pair of cast on though, that one. If I have a pattern sock, I have to have a plain vanilla sock. Yeah. If I have a plain one, then I'm fine. But uh -huh. um, but I do like to have socks, a couple of socks where if I want to just take one and go like I can take one if there's one that needs heel I don't want to be doing that when I need to not yeah. think so it's nice to have them in different so, kind of state that I guess yeah. that's what I'm saying like socks don't bother me to have multiples but like sweaters shawls um, bigger projects like that I don't want to have tons of those um, sitting because I want to be able to be working on them yeah what was I gonna okay. say I have two questions for our viewers. Okay, two so, questions. Well, okay. like, questions. Number one is, I really want to have a blanket woven from my yarn, but I have no idea how to do that, and I haven't really found who does that. Like, I found one person, and then I went to go email them, and they had an autoresponder saying they weren't taking any more commissions and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if we have any weavers out there, or who do commissions, or, can refer me. I'd love some information about that. So yeah. that was one. One thing we could do is we could go to Canyon Wren. Canyon Wren 
Sorry. Sorry. I don't know. I forgot to tell you. Well, you did text me. I'm a weaver now. Well, I weave. If you want to weave it, I actually, I actually don't, don't think really I want weave. to learn how to weave. At least not right now. I mean, but I thought you said that's something you wanted to learn how to do. No, it's and on I my bucket list, but to. I don't want to do it right now <laughs> because I want to. I just Focus have so many things. other things that I'm doing that I'm really enjoying, and that's not like my high priority. And I realize sometimes you have to like figure it out. And really, what it is, I want the finished project. It's not that I want to do it. I want to have the thing. Yeah. So when you in that position, I'm like, well, I want to find somebody who does it then. Yeah. Um, if it's something that you want the process, then that's a little different. And I realized I don't really want the process. I just really want that finished. See, and I object. was like, I don't. I'm not really interested in weaving. But next to the booth was this lady, and she's like, yeah, okay. I saw everybody weaving, but I didn't know what was happening. I thought it was just a class or something. And it's like, no, come sit down, weave here, make whatever you want fun weaving and it was like the last 10 minutes yeah and nobody was around so I'm like okay well let's wander over and see what's going on and then I found out that she has a studio with four looms that she warps up and you can pay $35 for two and a half hours to go and weave all supplies included all supplies included yeah she okay, well, but see, me that's the other thing because I want that's the whole point of what I want is yeah a blanket made out of yarn berry yarns yeah. So anyway, but anyways, I was just like, this is actually really, really exciting and really fun. And I had a great time, but I was going to say, if you wanted to weave it, I'm sure that that was an option without having to purchase a loom, yeah. invest yeah. in this major production near, right. to, you know, but obviously I know nothing about what it takes to weave a blanket. So I'm like, you can just go weave one, Emily. Sure, no problem. Yeah, no, we should get somebody that knows what we're doing. <laughs> so if somebody is, is you know, if one of our viewers is a person who weaves, who does commissions, or um, anyway, or knows somebody, would you refer me? That would be awesome. That would be so nice. I know, that wouldn't would that be wonderful? so nice. I know. All right, so here's the second one. This is a plea. I am looking for an assistant who will let me pay them in yarn <laughs> i need everybody's somebody. ears just like yes yes i need somebody who <laughs> will put my yarn on ravelry for me because i don't have any time to sit and one at a time add my yarns to ravelry but i really need to get them on there and i've had so many people ask me are you gonna put your yarn on ravelry because it's still not up there and i feel really bad so if somebody wants to create ravelry listings for me like not listings but well, whatever. Do you, maybe you know what I'm saying. I don't know if I'm not explaining that well. And would be willing to get paid in free yarn, then contact me. That would be awesome. You guys can discuss the we can negotiate. Discuss the, we can negotiate some terms. <laughs> hey. That sounds like a deal. I feel like sure. once it was all up there, I could totally keep up on adding them as I add new colorways, but mm -hmm. getting caught up on it is just like... Overwhelming. Ugh. Yeah. It's stressing me out. Yeah. I don't blame you. That is so, a project for sure. Yeah. Anyway, those are my two things I wanted to ask people for. Okay. We don't have a giveaway this time. No, we don't have a giveaway. I figured we had plenty to talk about. I didn't I know. plan any additional segments. Yeah, that's probably so. for the best. <laughs> I feel like we need a giveaway, though. Can we do a giveaway? Uh, what's the giveaway? Well, tell me, tell me what's happening. I don't like. know. I'm thinking, like, I have it. So I um, am adding some really fun little things to my shop. And I am adding these most adorable book progress oh, keepers. And so I forgot cute. to bring them, but we'll put a picture in here of a few of the, the options. There's, like... 10 different books um and so what what should we do it let's see do, how do you read and knit do you read and knit first of all and if so how what are your what's your favorite method for reading and knitting okay sounds good i'm writing down okay. this here so i don't forget and we'll do a ravelry um Page. Oh my gosh. The Ravelry page for the giveaway. Post. A Ravelry post. Thank you. That you can, a thread. That's the word I'm looking for. So come and add how you read and knit and let include some of your favorite books. Like give a give me just two of your favorite books. Yeah, and I just asked for favorite audio books yesterday uh -huh. because I was just like, I need something new. I know. I'm just about done with Lord of the Rings again. I'm like right at the very and end. I read of the same like 
big series. I mean, oh, we've I got know. like three I'm pretty big sure I'm gonna series that I love, right again. <laughs> but I keep listening to them again. I know. Again, again, Same here. I need some different ones. So, okay, and. Okay, so there's three, I'm actually gonna have three things in there. So you can say, how do you read and knit? A um, couple of your favorite books, and then how about a favorite book to movie or book to mini series adaptation? Do they have to answer all three of them? No, you can answer just, I mean, whatever sparks your interest. I wanna just hear your ideas. Okay. And then I will be giving away a set of um, three progress keepers that are so cute. Those books. They are so. really cute. Those and are cute. Um, I'm just going to pick what the titles are. So. Okay. Sounds good. I like All it. All right. That'll be fun. Okay. Um, in Ravelry, we have a thread where you can ask questions um, to us. And we often get a lot of questions down below in our comments, which are fantastic. But... We'd love if you go into Ravelry and you put any questions that you have for Emily and I for us to do a answer your questions segment mm -hmm. in an upcoming podcast. So you can, well, you could ask us anything and we'll choose to answer it or not. So it doesn't necessarily mean we'll answer it. We can be a little bit selective in that depending <laughs> on what you choose to ask. And if we actually know anything about it or not. <laughs> I can make all sorts of things up. But, <laughs> But you can go in there and see the thread um, for that, and we will answer questions in an upcoming segment. Sounds okay. great. I think we have gone on <sighs> long enough. My back is done. Yes. It is. So is my front. Me... <laughs> I don't know what that meant. It just. Sorry. <laughs> Your front is. My the hair way. is. It doesn't look quite <laughs> as much like a wild animal sat on my head as it did when I first got here when the wind was blowing, but. <laughs> Pretty nuts. <laughs> All right, so we will see you again. Hopefully, I don't know when. It, I well, hopefully soon. <laughs> we like would like to make promises, but promises then we, we would don't break intend them. to keep. What is that from? What is I, that? I have no idea. Promises you don't intend to keep. It is. I know it's a Disney movie. Anyways, sorry, name that movie if you remember. Okay. I know. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll talk to you again. See you soon. soon. Bye. Bye.